Hafadeh, I'm May Habib from PNC News. This is Coffee with the Candidates. I'm sitting today with current Senator, Democratic Senator, Therese Terlahi, and hopeful for a third term in the 36th Guam Legislature. Senator, tell me, why do you want to run again? Oh, well, to be honest with you, I had to really think hard about it this term, and, uh, but I decided, you know, people of Guam are really in, an, in a health emergency that has really impacted every family's lives deeply, and I wanted to help them get through it. So I know I've got, you know, four more months in this term to do all I can to to take care of these families, make sure their children are safe and able to get educated, and uh, that families have food, that their housing is not going to go away. And uh, so really, I just felt a duty that I could, I could do it, let's do it, let's, uh, let's pull them through, let's help pull them through. So next term, I think it's going to be very challenging. We have uh, you know, devastating impacts to our economy, and. So I just wanted to, I, I, I feel like I have the ability to help through that, and so I want to help. So talk to me about that. Looking at the next term, even looking at this term, we're facing some serious budget shortfalls. You know, the federal funding has helped us out a little bit, but how do we sustain ourselves, and what are you proposing we do with such a big shortfall and so many needs on the island? Well, there are a lot of needs, and I think, number one, it's always going to be prioritized. You have to prioritize what is really critical now. So we have a lot of uh, programs that I think are really very nice and great for the government of Guam to implement, but at this time, because of the changes, I think we have to implement the most critical, make sure those are taken care of, food, housing, shelter, um, the children, that we take, we make sure they're taken care of, and, and we might just have to put some things off for the long run. I mean, you know, for maybe hopefully, you know, this comes back sooner than later. So just put it off for a little while. And uh, I think we have to prioritize, you know, the types of employees that we're hiring or for stop hiring and just do with what we have right now. And we have to grow our economy. So we have to um, take care of these businesses, what their needs are, that make sure that we can make them operate safely so that we will be known as the safe place to go, the safe place uh, for, for recreation and, and everything. So we can do that. And I've supported you know, the, the um, small business, uh, business privilege tax relief. Uh, I, I wasn't in favor of the business privilege tax increase in the prior term. And I've been, you know, supported the increase, uh, taking care of our destination here, our roads, our um, infrastructure, including flooding, and all those things that really are not just sight, unsightly, but really unhealthy. And that's, that's what my priority is. You know, part of the devastation on Guam is tourism. Of course, that's no secret. How do you suggest we move forward and diversify our economy? Well, diversifying the economy, I think Guam, you know, we have plans for that. Agriculture, aquaculture, always been on the books. We've got other incomes that we've allowed, you know, uh, qualifying certificates for to attract them. And, and that was the theory of diversifying the economy. But I think we need to, I think the retraining of, of persons who have lost their jobs or whose jobs might not come back, we need to be closer to making that type of determination. And we have retraining available. So I think we just need to, you know, put that together and that uh, we have a great demand for nurses, we have a great demand for surveyors, we have a great demand here for other types of, you know, employees. And uh, so I'm hoping that this is our time to get these people into these types of jobs, to get our new students who are graduating into the jobs that they're really going to be able to, to get employed after graduation. So. I, I think it's doable, and I just think it takes a, a lot of, uh, you know, working together. We need media to help us and make sure they all know about these. We've got free programs for certain types of priority uh, education or retraining, and uh, so I, I'm hoping apprenticeships, that that's what we can focus on. You've been vocal, Senator, about um, government transparency yes. when it comes to the, especially the coronavirus, the CARES Act money that came to us from the federal government. How would you say the, Adelu, the governor's office, has handled the coronavirus pandemic on Guam? Well, I think um, 
they've worked very hard. I think all across the government, I can see that they've worked very hard, public health, GMH, I mean, I really want to commend them. And I think uh, the governor and, you know, you can tell their intentions, great. I, I so in our numbers are, are they're not devastating. Uh, it's really an all around devastation around the world. So, you know, we're doing, we're doing okay. But I think we could just do still, we could still do better to uh, just let the people know every step of the way, what our plans are, so they can go along with those and what we are actually spending the money on. I think we can still do a better job at that. So, so just more transparency. Absolutely. It, you know, when people know what's going on, they will come along. And they, if they know especially why, they will come along. And if they know you have a plan to put this in place, they, they will... They, will, they might you know, be patient enough to wait for that. But if we do the opposite, they, they can't stand that. And I don't blame them because they've got families to feed. We've got children who are you know, not going to school and, and those are critical to them. And we need to address what's critical to them. I think that's something not just out of the legislature could also do a better job at. We have to focus on the families. We have to focus on what do they need and we have to focus on how can we help them. And that's our job. And despite, you know, um, it doesn't matter who's where or, you know, what uh, party you're in or, or anything like that, but how are we going to help those families? We are their voice. We are, we are in a position to, you know, uh, take action, make some changes, and that's what we should do. You know, I've heard you mention more than once children and families, and uh, a lot of people are concerned about safety. You know, there's an increase in crime, particularly yes. petty crime um, in the times we're facing. How would you suggest that we deal with this increase of crime? What do we do to combat it? Well, there, I think you know, crime has to be addressed uh, based on what type of crime we're talking about. A lot of our crime on Guam, in fact, I've been told by the experts, the attorney generals, and of various years, crime is a lot of our crime is based on drugs, and so we've got to get to the root. And I'm a big proponent of getting to the root of the problem. And I've seen legislation that I think just doesn't hit that root of the problem, and so drugs is one, and we've got to tighten our borders. The drugs are coming in. They're not necessarily all manufactured here. In fact, and the experts tell us they're coming in. Why are we failing at that on those borders? We've got to tighten those borders, uh, and we increase our inspection rate. It's very simple. The inspection rate is very low, you know, for, for planes, uh, cargo. It's, it's just not up to par right now. So we can increase that. Uh, we need to, um, and then there are other types of crimes, such as criminal sexual conduct. This has been a big thing. We've had roundtables and oversight hearings of, you know, the judiciary even on, on what, what is the issue? We are releasing people who are going out and reoffending, And so uh, we've narrowed it down to what we hope will help, and that is that the people who are making these decisions to release criminal sexual conduct offenders uh, they need to be given the correct tools. They need to be shown. There are studies that can tell you whether these people will are likely to reoffend, and you need to know that before you let them out. Otherwise, you are risking the safety of our community, and you, and no one should do that. No one should be allowed to do that. So they need to know the risk to the community, and they need to know whether we have any rehab here on Guam. And we found that we really did not have, for, and we have very little currently. So. If that's the case, I mean, that's just the reality, and you have to deal with it. And you can't, um, you know, close your eyes and say, they're safe, let them out. I don't think so. Now, the science tells us otherwise. And so I just feel like those tools now, because of a bill that I passed, have been put in front of parole officers, judges, anyone uh, dealing with uh, these types of offenses, that they're going to be based on more evidence. So I know that you're a sitting senator, and I know that you're still discussing current bills, including some that you've introduced yourself, but if you come back to the 36th legislature, what would your first measure be that you'd introduce? First measure I'd introduce is um, probably going to relate to, well, when we get back in January, this is, you know, after four more months, it's going to be the end of the first quarter of this new fiscal year, this new budget that we're going to pass uh, in a few weeks. So. I think it's a perfect time to reevaluate what our priorities are. And so I'm going to take a look at that in January after the December reports come in, and I'm going to, to ensure that 
our priorities are still getting food to the families, shelter to these families, children, you know, edu education is in line. The first bill I'm, I'm hoping to introduce at that time, I mean, I don't want to make any promises because we, we, these need to be finessed, but um, is to just ensure that we're going to get the infrastructure out to the Chamorro Land Trust that is needed. And uh, so all of that helps with housing. It helps taking care of families who are permanent, more permanently, and uh, uh, we need to prioritize those. Would you say children and youth are a big priority for you? Of course, always been. I mean, on Guam, you know, it's like, I'm not here really for myself because the changes that we make today, you know, we want them to impact families so that they can, they can continue to raise their families here. That's really my hope. I, you know, I raised my family here, I was raised here, and I want other people to be able to do that and not feel like they have to leave because of economics or they're disgusted with the crime rates or, or anything like that. And I, I feel like if I got it in me and I can help, that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that these families feel safe. They can raise their, raise their children here, their grandchildren. That's, okay. that's, that's the joy of Guam. That's the beauty of Guam. And so I really want to preserve that. Give me a 30-second elevator pitch of why people should vote for you. Well, I think if you want a legislature that is going to do its job, including hard work, oversight of the rest of the government, it's going to ask the hard questions, and it's going to prioritize what is needed for your families and your, your workplaces, then that's why you should vote for me. My record is very clear. I have, I have um, worked very hard and really tried to get to the bottom of these long-standing issues for justice on Guam and to ensure that justice is done, that people know the truth, and that we are able to act on it. Great. Thank you, Senator. I may be from the Pacific News Center. Thank you for watching Coffee with the Candidates. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.